गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज आवर हिस्ट्री क्लास एंड वी आर स्टडिंग चैप्टर टेन द रीडिंग ऑफ चैप्टर टेन इज वी स्टार्टेड एंड इन द लास्ट क्लास एंड इन टूडेज क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम मोर टॉपिक्स ऑफ द सेम चैप्टर पिंदुसारा टू हंड्रेड नाइन्टी टू बी सी टू टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री बी सी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन आवर प्रीवियस क्लास इन टूडेज क्लास पेज नंबर एटी नाइन अशोका टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटी थ्री बी सी टू टू हंड्रेड थर्टी टू बी सी वी विल डिस्कस ना एवरीबडी लिसन द नेम हैव यू हर्ड द नेम ऑफ द अशोका वंस इन योर लाइफ अशोका वॉज द सन ऑफ बिंदुसारा एंड द नेम ऑफ द फादर ऑफ अशोका इज बिंदुसारा He is regarded as one of the greatest king of India by the historians, and Ashoka is regarded as one of the greatest kings of the India. So, Ashokan pillar and edicts spread over different parts of India gives a lot of information about his rule. The pillars and the principle of Ashoka that are all over the world that tells a lot of information about. how uh, ashoka ruled he ruled over he ruled over uh, a vast empire stretching from the himalaya in the north to mysore in the south and uh, and from afghanistan in the north west to bank of the river brahmaputra in the east and also included kabul kandhar meerut and parts of nepal and kashmir it covered the entire indian subcontinent except some part of present day tamil nadu karnataka and kerala now some thing about the kaling war that he fought in 2000 to 261 bc kaling was a strategic uh, strategically important region it has renamed un conquered by the mauryans when ashoka realized that his region would give greater economic pro- prosperity to the mauryans empire he decided to attack it in around 261 bc he conquered it after a lot of the struggle kalinga was a prosperous kingdom on a fertile land it lay between the river godavari and mahanadi near the bay of bengal it had a infantry of about 6 10000 men 10000 horsemen and 600 elephant ashoka fought a fierce battle against kalinga in which around 1 lakh people were killed and 1 lakh 50000 were taken as prisoners at the end of the battle kalinga surrendered means ashoka won and in last this war unable ashoka to capture the entire subcontinent except extreme south the kalinga was included one of the largest and the bloodiest battle in the indian history the kalinga war proved to be a turning point in the life of ashoka ashoka saw, saw a huge destruction in his war he feel very guilty after that war yeah, how many people died because of that rule he witnessed wounded crippled and dead people all around him during this war he felt deep deep remorse at the death of all the peoples destruction and great human suffering he would never to wage a war again he became a buddhist after being deeply influenced by the buddhist principles of compassion peace and non violence since then he devoted his life toward dharma and towards the moral as well as material welfare on his subject he vowed to conquer the heart of the people with love instead of the war he adopted the policy of dhamma vijaya conquest through dharma by leaving his previous policy of dig vijaya conquest of the terrorist he left his previous policy now what is ashoka's dhamma dhamma is a set of edicts that forms a policy of mauryan empires ashoka maurya the word dhamma has been derived from the sanskrit word word dharma 
dhamma is also same as the religion dharm which means religion duty ashoka dhamma policy was based on the principle of the buddhism it was mainly inspired by the noble teachings of buddha describing the way of life based on human values and moral code of conduct such as truth charity kindness purity goodness he considered all his subjects as his children and wanted them to lead pure and virtuous life irrespective of their religion and culture he advised people to live in peace and harmony and follow ahimsa or non violence moreover they should love one another and show tolerance toward all religions children should obey their elders and elders should treat children with love and understanding so everyone have to understand each other everyone have to love each other ashoka explained his message of dhamma in several edicts which were written in brahmi script and composed in prakriti language prakrit language which was the language of the common people edicts are royal commands or proclamation that were inscribed inscribed on rocks polished stone polished stone pillars and caves and contain inscriptions of reforms as well as moral principle in afghanistan some edicts were composed in greek for the same reason in the northwest they were written in greek kharosthi and aramia aramia ek aramiac whatever the name aramiac it's a language for po purpose of these edicts was to inform people of ashoka reform beside encouraging them to be morally good generous and kind ashoka edicts includes 14 rock edicts and seven pillar edicts as well as several other minor edicts these edicts were put up in different parts of his empire generally in public place like market temple etc now acceptance of all sects he advocated a policy of tolerance toward all religions all religions should be tolerate other religion he visited many places associated with buddha such as bodhgaya sarnath etc and ordered the constitution and uh, ordered the construction of bodhis monastery at several places he attempted to spread the religions to several countries such as syria egypt macedonia and sri lanka by sending buddhist scholar as dhamma mahamathas to help in governing these lands he sent his son mahindra and daughter sangamitra to sri lanka for some, for the same purpose by charitable to the poor poor speak the truth follow the path of ahimsa ashoka denounced all useless ceremonies and sacrifice held under the influence of superstitions now welfare measure ashoka was one of the greatest king he was deeply concerned about the welfare of his people he treated all his subject as his children and desire their that they be happy for carrying administrative work he appointed official called mahamatas he built good roads and many hospital for his people as well as rest houses for the travelers he dug deep wells he appointed many officials on tours to find out the problem of his subjects canal were dug for the irrigation that were the works that is done by the ashoka so student that's all from this class in next class we are going to discuss about main feature of the mauryan empire so student you have to read it and previous one also if you have any problem in this video in this topic you are unable to understand something you can ask me thank you and have a nice day